Did you miss me? I know I didn't put out a video this weekend. It was Father's Day weekend, and I am a father. But to be completely straight with you, I did not visit my own children. <laughs> not really possible. They live way too far away. I mean, one of them lives in Scotland, right? <laughs> but my dad, he lives in the same state, but he's about six hours away. So we met in the middle of the state, went to a restaurant, went to the casino, and woohoo, I made some money. Yeah, it was a good weekend. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed yours as well. But now we're at the start of the week, and I'm ready to share another hot penny stock with you. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is Monday. It is June 17th. Now, if you don't know what it is we do on this show, this must be the first time you've come here, which is great. I love first-timers. So let me fill you in real briefly on what it is we do. I trade penny stocks every single day. Every week, every month, that's what I do. So I like to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock that I found through the day. And my formula, I like to find a hot chart first. I look at the charts, I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time, and I can basically tell if there's heat in a chart at a glance. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I'll take the time to go through their press releases and filings looking for a catalyst, looking for a hot piece of information. If I can match hot information to a hot chart, what do you got? You're darn tootin'. We got ourselves a hot penny stock. And that's what I like to share with you on a regular basis. And that's what I've got for us today. This is Silex Holdings, ticker SCLX. Now, I'm not too excited to share this with you because it's in the biotech sector. They make medications and drugs. Why don't I like to talk about them? Primarily because of the terminology. They got a lot of big words with these chemicals and names of drugs. I can't pronounce them and I look silly trying. So if I skip words, I don't think it's that important. I don't think we have to pronounce a chemical or a drug to know what's going on. So I will be missing a few words here. But I found this stock looking at the chart. The chart was hot today. Not just her chart, but her warrant as well. Ticker SCLXW, just put a W at the end of the ticker, it stands for warrant. Her warrant was hot today, it's up 42%. And we're going to look at it, its chart as well, because this is a stock that you want to keep an eye on as well. Our Silex here, she hasn't got what I would call catalyst. Her chart's running right now, and it's running hard. I looked at it just before I jumped into this video, and she ran further today than I was expecting her to run. She's looking very much like a rocket stock. And what happens with rocket stocks? They run out of fuel and they end up turning down and crashing back down to a strong SMA. Normally a big drop, which is our buy-in opportunities normally. And that may be the case here. But my point is she is not running on catalyst. She is running on a wave. She has had so much news come out in the last 30 days, it's tough to keep up with it. They are constantly putting out news because they keep doing more and more. And they're doing a lot right now. This is a revenue generating biotech, not strictly R&D spending money. They've got drugs approved by the FDA. They're making money. They've got another drug, as you're going to see, that they just got approved. And they've got other drugs in the pipeline. And we're going to look at that. The other reason I'm not crazy about biotechs most of the time, it's tough to come up with pretty pictures for you. I know how much you like your pictures. And I just don't want to throw up pictures of any old doctor or nurse or hospital. So there may not be a lot of graphics here either. So Silex, she finished today at $2.19. And she was up just a wee bit over 36% today. She is a hot penny stock on the NASDAQ, a major exchange. You find penny stocks everywhere. But I like the ones on the major exchange. First off, they're safer. There's a lot more rules and hoops they have to jump through up on the major exchange. They get away with way too much down on the OTC, and normally we're the ones that pay for it. So I like that. Plus, the major exchange have a heck of a lot more money and a heck of a lot more volume. Don't you want your stock someplace where it's going to be played? And last but not least, well, maybe not even last. No, there's two more benefits. You can trade pre-market, after-market. 
You can never do that with OTC. And if you're not paying attention to these major exchange stocks pre-market, you're missing some huge bounces. Some of the biggest gains of the day are during pre-market. And the last thing, they're free to trade. There's no transaction fees on the major exchange, not like the OTC. So what is Silex all about? Well, I told you they're a biotech. I would really like to avoid the next part. We're going to take a look at the company's description over here at their most recent uh, press release. And honestly, this is all we need to look at outside of the news. They give us all the information here. Thank God that's going to make things easy. And I have uh, jumped around and made it as easy for me to read. So that should make it easy for you to understand. Silex Holding Company is an innovative revenue generating company focused on acquiring, developing, and commercializing non-opiate pain management products for the treatment of acute and chronic pain. Silex targets indications with high unmet needs and large market opportunities with non-opiate therapies for the treatment of patients with acute and chronic pain and are dedicated to advancing and improving patient outcomes. Now, a lot of these biotech and pharmacies are looking for unmet needs because there's no competition. They'll be the only drug out there, which gives them a head start because the FDA sees that and they will help them get that drug through. Plus, when they get to phase three, the phase three trial being the last one and normally the longest, about five years or more, this is when your drug is put up against all the other competitors' drugs. Well, if there's no other competitors, you get through phase three pretty quick. So they like to find those sort of drugs. They go on to tell us that Silex's commercial products include, they've got three drugs here already approved by the FDA. ZT Lido, a prescription lidocaine topical product approved by the FDA for the relief of neuropathic pain associated with post-shingles nerve pain. I guess a lot of people who had the mumps can get this in their later years and it's quite painful. Their second drug, Elixir B, a potential first-line treatment and the only FDA-approved, ready-to-use oral solution for the acute treatment of migraines. And their last drug, Gloperba, the first and only liquid oral version of the anti-gout medicine. And this is expected to launch in the first half of 2024. Folks, it's happening right now. It is launching as I'm talking to you. Now, as I said, they have drugs in the pipeline as well. We've got three of them listed here. SP-102. Why can't all the names be that simple? SP-102 is a novel gel formulation for lower back pain with the association of the sciatica nerve. Now, I have this condition. Lower back pain can be a problem for a lot of people. There's a lot of nerves back there. One of those nerves is the sciatica. That runs down the front of your thigh, and it goes right to your knee, and it creates a pain that goes through that entire area. And it feels like it's coming from the bone, and it makes your legs weak. You can't stand up, and your legs will just give out from underneath you. And there's no Tylenol or aspirin or icy hot that you can use that's going to make it feel better. We do need a, a medication for that. This drug is completed. It's phase three trial and it has been granted fast track status from the FDA. And that's exactly what it sounds like, fast tracking it. Their second drug candidate is SP103. This is the next generation triple strength formulation of their already approved drug, ZT Lido, for the treatment of chronic neck pain. And this has already completed phase two trial, and it has also been granted fast track status by the FDA. And their last drug is SP-104, a novel low dose treatment for fibromyalgia. And this is in phase one, and they have just completed that. Uh, oh, they did that all the way back in 2022. Now, that's kind of interesting. We've got one here that just completed phase three, the very last trial. One that just completed phase two, going into phase three. And one that has completed phase one, probably in phase two. This is a nice track, so they'll come out behind each other, you know, and we keep getting new drugs put out there. So, we've got three drugs in the pipeline here. We've got three drugs already approved and the company is making money. 
you want to know more? Well, I'll share some more with you. But for the due diligence, you may want to jump over to their website and all the news I'm about ready to share with you. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, hit the right button and I'd be able to answer that. Wow. Yeah, we had an explosion today over five times her normal volume. I mean, it's not a major explosion, but we have gone over a million, which we haven't been over basically for the last 30 days. Today, we were at five and a half million. Share structure for the company. Don't have a lot of information here. Outstanding share count, it's average. We can't complain about it, can't brag about it. It's about 181 million. Don't know what the float is, don't know what the insider zone. Best I can say is that it won't be any higher than the outstanding share count. And because we're on the NASDAQ, it won't be any lower than 1 million. So somewhere between those two numbers, that's where our float's going to be. Market cap, we're up there at about 291 million. Financials for Silex. Yes, they are revenue generating. You can see it's not like they just started making money. They've been making money for a while. Back in 2020, they did 23 and a half million. No, not thousands. They tell us up here, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. In the middle of COVID, they jumped up to 31. End of COVID, they were up to 38. And now we're up to 46. Steady growth, folks. And their profit margin is growing right along with them. And it's a pretty good profit margin as well. Looks to be about 60% plus. Quarterly reports. What have we got going here? 10, 12, 10, 13, 10. Mm. So they're hovering between 10 and 13 million every three months, and their profits are between six and seven million. It's steady revenues, and I expect the revenues to get stronger and stronger, considering they've got more drugs coming onto the market right now. Balance sheet, what have they got going on here? All right, let's not forget those three zeros. In the bank, we got about 1.8 million. Total assets added all up. We got about 91 million. Oh, doggone it. Total liabilities, 281 million. Ouch. So we are holding stockholder deficit in this company. I'm not crazy about that. Of about 190 million. Let's take a look at those disclosures. Okay, let's see what we got here. Form 4. You know, I honestly can't remember, so you can look with me. Uh, what I normally look for, a Form 4 is filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. Well, I jump into these and immediately look here. If I see a P, I know they've purchased them. If I see an S, I know they sold them. I see any other letter, it ain't a buy or a sell. And I'm normally not too interested in it. So this is not a buy or a sell. So I just jump out of that. 424B3, I think I actually have this. Yeah, I knew I did. So this filing is informing us that they are putting 13 and a half million more shares on the market. A half million of them are just being resold by the company for some of their big investors. That's not gonna affect the float at all. But then we've got 13 million warrants being exercised. That's gonna affect our share count. That's gonna affect the float directly. Warrants are promissory notes that you buy and three, four, five years down the road, you can exercise them, you can use them. What they allow you to do is to buy a share at a guaranteed set low price. The price of the stock today may be 85 cents. The warrant says you can buy a share anytime in the next five years for $1. Well, right now you wouldn't use it because it's 85 cents. Three years down the road, the stock's up to $13. You can take your warrant and $1 and you can buy a $13 share for $1. That's a lot of money to be made. That's why people like warrants. Warren Buffett makes a lot of money off of warrants. So after these warrants are exercised, we're going to have 13 million more shares in the float. So we'll be closing in on about 200 million. All right, let's go take a look at that news now. We have got lots of news here. I am actually not going to dive into any of this. If you want the details, the details are in the news press. Dive into it. We've pretty much got as much information as we need in the headline here. Now, all of this news we're looking at, this is in less than a month. 
this company puts out news on a regular basis, which is good. It's feeding the investors. It's keeping the investors in the loop. This is great. I like that about the company right from the get-go. So I've gone back here to the 24th of May. They tell us here that the company sends a letter to the U.S. House of Representatives, as well as to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority regarding illegal market manipulation of the company's common stock, specifically referring to naked shorting, which is illegal. Naked shorting has been illegal basically since the real estate crisis when the market crashed. What naked shorting is, it's a lot different than shorting. Shorting, a trader goes to the broker and he borrows shares and it costs him nothing. The broker gives him shares for free. So what does the shorter do? He shorts the stock. He sells the stock and pushes the price down. When the price falls, he sells and pushes the price down. What does he do with the money? He keeps it. But he's got to give these shares back. So he pushes the price down far as he can and then he'll sell or buy down at the bottom because he's got to give the shares back. Everything between the top where he borrowed them from and where he returned them from is his gains in his pocket. And then he gives the shares back. Ta-da! That is legal. I hate it, but it's legal. Naked shorting is the exact same thing except there's no real shares. The broker doesn't have any shares to give, so he gives imaginary shares, synthetic shares, shares that don't exist. And here's the kicker. The shorter sells imaginary shares and gets real money for imaginary shares. Folks, shorting is supposed to have a place in the market, but here's the bottom line. A few people are making money at our expense, but more to the point, at the company's expense. You keep that price down, they can't get the market cap up. They got to get the market cap up for financing, for bank loans. So a few shorters are keeping these companies down and stealing our value from these companies. So personally, I hate shorting and especially naked shorting, which has been illegal for over 10 years. And I don't know of anybody who's gone to jail for it. And it is done all the time by private investors, hedge funds. I mean, it's being done all the freaking time. Somebody needs to enforce that law. Sorry if I got worked up about that, but as a penny stock trader, I hate seeing these little companies, startup companies get beat down before they ever had a chance to start. There should be some rules. Company has to have at least 250 million market cap or something before you can short it. You can't go fighting toddlers. Imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger beating up a three-year-old. I am strong. No. Anybody can beat up a baby, and that's what shorters are doing with these startup companies. It just isn't right. Now, these next three pieces of news here are all about the same drug, Globerba. Uh, this one here, FDA approval for liquid version of Colchicine for gout flares. U.S. FDA has approved the SNDA for commercial manufacturing of Glioperba. Glioperba. I told you I hate these words. Glowperba, which will be launched in the U.S. in the week of June 10th, 2024. So they just, just launched this one week ago. The company announces stocking of Glowperba is underway in all of the wholesalers throughout the USA. That was on the 10th. On the 11th, the company announces a five-year term of $100 million financing with royalty-based payments and potential strategic transaction with Paragrove and portfolio companies. Now, I did dive into this. They are getting $100 million from two different companies. They are going to use it to pay back a debt of $85 million to one company and then use the other $15 million to help the company move forward. And the last piece of news the company announces in a publication, the Pain Journal, regarding phase three results of pivotal registration trial of SP-102 for the lower back pain connected to the sciatica nerve. Oh, please get that out. Would you believe I'm going through that right now? I put my back out just before Father's Day. Thank God they have chairs in the casino. So we've got a lot going on here, folks. They've got two drugs already approved. As you can see, Glioperba just got approved. They are 
fulfilling all of their uh, stores out there, Where, wherever they put it on the shelves, they are getting all of that stocking done. They got $100 million paying off a of debt. That's going to help the company's deficit. That's going to help our assets. They're going to take the other $15 million and help build the company. And they have just come through phase three trial for their SP-102. Phase three is the last one. Now they just have to apply for their license to sell it. And that one goes on the market. So what I see here, folks, is wave behind wave behind wave creating a tsunami of strength. And I think this is going to lift the price up and she's not going to lose value. Her revenues are going to start growing now. And, you know, I haven't done the research on it. You may want to check into this. I'm sure one of these pieces of news has it. What is the market for this Glow Perba? How much money are they expecting to tap into? Remember, they like to work with unmet medical needs so that they get the lion's share of the money. They don't have to share it with any of their competitors because there are no competitors. So I think there's a lot going on here, folks. The company's got a strong chart for the common stock. She's got a strong chart for the warrant. And I want to look at them both right now. All righty then. Let's do some charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at Silex, and I got both charts opened up for us. We got the common stock here on the left, and we got the warrant on the right. Both of these are opened up to six-month, four-hour views, and as you can see, both are going into orbit right now. Both of their 200-day SMAs have gone flat. Both have broke out over them and are just climbing now. And I expect to pull back at some point, of course. All right, let's focus in on that common stock first. Six month, four hour view. Got some supports and resistances. I was able to get off of the six month chart. Had to grab two of them off of the yearly chart. Matter of fact, let's jump back to that yearly chart so we can get our 52 week highs and lows. A full year ago, we had a 52 week high of $8.03. And uh, mid May, we hit our 52 week low of 73 cents. All of our oscillators on our yearly chart are climbing right now. Every single one of them looking very strong. Volume is very strong right now. Let's come on back down to that six-month, four-hour view. So now you know where that 200's coming from. $8 falling all the way down here. And what happened once the 200-day SMA went flat? We had a breakout. She came from on top of the 200 haul, right? She likes to spring off of the 200 haul to and through the 200 day SMA. This run here went from a buck up to 221. You got 125% gain there. Came down, she's bounced off of that 200 many times, took another climb to our high bubble, and then something brought her down. And I'm not real sure what did this, but she fell from 263 down to a buck 25. Went sideways and tried to make another breakout attempt, but our 200 day SMA is falling now not a good time to be trying to break out. She banged her head on that a few times and then took another tumble down to that 52 week low. She bounced off of that, went sideways. And once she got on top of that 50 day SMA, she got cocky. She ran all the way up to that 200, busted it, fell back to her nine day. And she just stuck underneath that 200 all this time. You've got to watch a stock when it's getting close to the 200 and won't let go of it something's bound to happen. Well, once the 50-day SMA crossed the 200, that was her signal. She took off from $1.12 all the way up here to $2.30. You're looking at over 100% run there, and she's still climbing. All of our SMAs have crossed the 200-day SMA and are climbing. Looking pretty good. The only scary thing is, is that's gone parabolic. It's gone straight up. It's a rocket stock. So we're going to be looking for it to come back down. Where? Well, onto these strong supports, right? We've got one here at $1.96. She pulls back off to $2.15. This is where she should bounce. If she misses that, then she should come down to $1.75 and bounce. And I wouldn't think she's going to come any lower than that. Again, our volume is getting stronger every single day. Our 200-day SMA is just now turning up, and all of our osculators are on fire or climbing. We do have a wee bit of pullback on our RSI right now, but heck, she's up there at 81, still on fire, looking very strong. Come on down to our 
20 day, one hour view. So here we are in our low bubble right at the 200 jumped up, got up on top of our 50 rolled the 50 until we hit the 200 took this rubber ball bounce like a rubber ball does goes in the water, comes out and jumps. She jumped as soon as she came out of that water back up on top of her 50 and then she launched. She jumped here from a buck 13, went to a buck 65, fell back down onto her nine day SMA. That's not looking weak at all. Just because she falls down doesn't mean it's weak. You have to stay near your SMAs. Well, she's floating on that nine day, bounced off her 20 day and launched. She's running there, going from a buck 47 up to $2 and 30 cents and getting right up underneath our third resistance at $2.35. Everything is climbing on this chart, every single thing. But again, our price is moving a little fast. She is sticking to the nine day. She gets too far away from that. She'll have to pull back at least to the nine day. If the nine day SMA gets too far away from the 20, we could see a drop in the price back to the 20. So we are looking for a pullback right now. Oscillators on our hourly chart, hot, hot, hot. Everything going up except our RSI. We can't see it very well here because there's no red, but we've had a pullback here after market, but we are still in the overbought at 79. Looking at that five day, five minute, that's a perfect chart. Low bubble in this corner, high bubble way up here. Whatever happens in the middle doesn't matter. Low bubble, high bubble, just like that. That's a perfect chart. We went from 98 cents to $2.30 in five days. Cutting through all of these resistances, turning them into supports right now. Now she's falling here. She's come back down to her 50, breaking the 20, breaking the 200 haul. There's a possibility she could keep falling. She could come down here to that buck 97, buck 98. I wouldn't think so. I'd watch for it to bounce off the 50, but it's possible. Still, we got a lot of strength on this board. The whole thing is in an uptrend right now with a cooling off period after market right now. And we can definitely see that in our oscillators. Right at the bell, everything started to fall. But pre-market tomorrow, it could kick right back into gear. Before the bell, this thing could be off and running and I'd be watching it pre-market. All right, let's go take a look now at that warrant. This is SCLXW. Just put a W on the end and you got yourself a warrant. Sometimes it's a forward slash WS, but most of them just use a W. So we're looking at a four hour, six month chart again. All right, all right, we'll go back to the year just to see what those 52 week highs and lows were. So back when she was at eight bucks, this warrant went up to two bucks. Now, I normally notice a lot of stocks go to 10% just regular. Whatever the price of the common stock is, the warrant is about 10% of it. Warrants are always a lot, lot cheaper than the common stock. They're normally always penny stocks. Warrants do not move like common stock does. Common stock, we're looking for millions of shares to move. Well, if you get millions of shares on a warrant, you really got yourself a hot warrant. Most warrants get tens of thousands, maybe a couple hundred thousand shares, and that's enough to get them to move. And when the stock moves 10, 20, 30%, don't be surprised to see your warrant go two, three, 400%, maybe even a thousand percent. It happens. That's why people like to play warrants. Not a lot of volume. It can be popcorn, but you can make a lot of money on warrants if you're in them at the right time. So as you can see on our yearly chart, we had a downtrend, strong one, but right now she is in the midst of that breakout going through our supports and resistances. Osculators, we just had a crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator. You read it the same way you meet, read your MACD. You want your blue line on top of the other line and you want to climb it. Both of these are looking good. Look at our RSI up there at 75 without any pullback right now. This is looking very good. That's six month, four hour view. So that's where your 200's coming from, that $2 price tag. On our six month chart, our high is 76 cents and we've got a low here of about 12.2 cents. When did that hit? That was on uh, the 10th of this month. 
And off of that low bubble, look at that, folks. She was going sideways. She got up on top of that 50, and then she had that big, unusual drop. Now, what happens with all of these big drops? Look at any of them. What happens to any of them? She comes back, right back to where she was all the time, over and over and over and over and over again. So this would have been a great buy, which tells me if I see another one of these red bars shoot way down there, buy. That's the time to average down or get your entry or whatever it is you're looking for. Buy cheap, sell high. That's a cheap way. So right now, we had that big bar and what do I call these? Pillars, right? She's up here in all the green zone on her nine day, 20 day, and she busts through the 50, busts through the 200, and then puts a wick, just the wick, all the way down deep, deep, deep into the dirt. That tells me she's ready for a serious climb. The taller you make a building, the deeper your foundation has to go into the ground. That's what I see that is. She just put a foundation pillar into the ground and says, I'm ready to climb. How far? A lot. Look at her go. She's breaking through that 200, floating on that nine day. Bars are getting bigger. Once she got on top of that 200 day SMA, she was off and running. All of our other SMAs are turned up and starting to climb. When they cross that 200, that's going to be like a turbo boost. They call these golden crosses. Each one of them can be a turbo boost to the price. Right now is a perfect time to be watching this for tomorrow and the next day. Absolutely. Volume, yeah, you got to be careful with volume on these. Volume is popcorn. It's off and on, off and on. If you see steady volume on a warrant, that's one you need to watch. Osculators, all of them are strong. PPO is climbing. MACD is climbing with green bars. RSI is still in the overbought, solid red. And we've got our pattern on our PPO and my ADX. ADX, that's this one here, is for trend continuation. This changes directions on its line whenever the trend changes on the board. Has nothing to do with up or down or sideways. Just, is that a straight line? If you look right from here and go up, well, this chart's a little difficult. In either case, <laughs> what I'm trying to point out here is between the PPO and the ADX, you see the price, the lines going apart. The blue line is climbing. My red line is coming down. When you see those two spreading apart, 100% of the time, it is climbing. If they're spreading apart, your price is climbing. And as long as they continue to spread, the price will continue to climb not even sideways, it's climbing. Now here's the deal with this. When either one of those lines change direction, they're spreading, 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 and this one changes or this one changes, doesn't matter which one or how they change. If they change, you have stopped climbing. So it's a good way to tell when you should get in or get out of a stock. Look at our MACD. MACD's up there at 35 climbing, getting stronger. Green bar is getting stronger. And we are still in the overbought on our RSI. Coming down to our one hour, 20 day. She's going straight, riding that 50 day SMA, crossed the 200 and she's off and flying. Broke through a resistance of 45 cents here. She's hitting the second one at 49 cents. She broke it at 50 cents. Looks like she's pulled back to about 47 cents and all of our SMAs are crossing the 200 right now. Vroom, vroom, vroom. This is gonna be our turbos right now. We've still got our spread on our PPO and ADX. That's looking hot. We've got a climb on our MACD and our RSI, though it's not in the overbought, it's right there at 67. Looking luscious. Come on down to that five day, five minute. Well, it's not as perfect as the last chart, but we've got a low bubble in this corner, 12 cents, high bubble in that corner of 50 cents. Woo! That is a 400% gain, folks. 400% gain in the last five days four days actually, and she is in position to climb. She has gotten in between these two supports and resistances, banging her head on one and barely bouncing off the bottom of the other. This is looking good to me, folks. I like warrants, but you got to have patience with warrants. And the one thing, the one thing I want to point out to you about a warrant, you get into it. Up here, folks, the ask and the bid. 
pay very close attention to your ask and your bid. You can get some hellacious spreads. You could say that this could be 50 cents and this could go up to 80 cents for the ask. 50 to 80 cents and then it jumps boink goes right to 80 cents and you're going whoa i just made good money whoa before you jump in there and sell it look at the ask look at the bid did it move or does it still say 50 cents on the bid a lot of times on warrants the price will jump but the bid doesn't move for one or two more sales they have to have that price hit two or three times before it moves Normally what you see, if the price jumps big all the way up, it will come down somewhere in the middle between where it was and where it hit. And then the price will jump up to that middle point and that can be a sell point. So there you go, folks. We have the warrant and we have the common stock. Both of them are taking off right now. I like both of them. You might want to do some more research. I think I covered a lot of information, but there's more information about their financials and their deals. So get in there. It's not going to hurt you. <laughs> Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.